Pestalozzi stated, I wish to wrest education from the outworn order of doddering old teaching hacks as well as from the new fangled order of cheap artificial tricks, teaching tricks and entrust it to the eternal powers of nature herself, to the light which God has kindled and kept alive in the hearts of fathers and mothers, to the interests of parents who desire their children grow up in favor with God and with men. Children should not be given ready-made answers, but should arrive at answers themselves. To do this, their own powers of seeing, judging, and reasoning should be cultivated, their self-activity encouraged. The aim is to educate the whole child. Intellectual education is only part of a wider plan. He looked to balance or keep in equilibrium three elements, hands, heart, and head. Personality is sacred. This constitutes the inner dignity of each individual for the young as truly as for the adult. As a little seed contains the design of the tree, so in each child is the promise of his potentiality. The educator only takes care that no uh, untoward influence shall disturb nature's march of developments. Love of those we would educate is the soul an everlasting foundation in which to work. Without love, neither the physical not, nor the intellectual powers will develop naturally. So kindness ruled in Pestalozzi's school. He abolished flogging, much to the amazement of outsiders. To get rid of the verbosity of meaningless words, Pestalozzi developed his doctrine of Anshang, direct concrete observation often inadequately called sense perception or object lessons. Two word was, no word was to be used for any purpose until inadequate or adequate and Shang had proceeded. This same method is used by the MTC when teaching foreign languages. To perfect the perception got by the and Shang, the thing that must be named, um, an appropriate action must follow. A man learns by action, having done with mere words. Life shapes us, and the life that shapes us is not a matter of words, but action. Out of this demand for action came an emphasis on repetition. Not blind repetition, but repetition of action following the Anshang. William H. Kilpatrick summarized six principles that run through Pestalozzi's efforts around schooling and what is his significance to informal educators today. First, there is his concern with social injustice and his commitment to work with those who have suffered within society. He saw education as central to the improvement of social conditions. He wanted all to be educated, including the poor. This is similar to the desires of the church, or desires of Christ, as stated, to the Nephites, as they began to grow wicked in pride, great divisions arose among them, and there were some classes who were not privileged in gaining an education. Second, he used his sympathy for peasant life and his remembrance of his mother's care as a guideline. There can be no doubt that within the living room of every household are united the basic elements of all true human education in its whole range. Still, Pestalozzi made a significant remark that the establishment of a school was a cultural educational force. Third, there is Pestalozzi's concern with equilibrium between elements, head, hands, and heart, and the dangers of attending to just one. Fourth, Pestalozzi is a classic example of the reflexive practitioner. He is concerned with action, with experimentation, and yet at the same time, he is committed to observation and reflection and to trying to make sense of experiences and situations. He is not afraid to make changes and admit that he is wrong. Fifth, in his experiment at Newhof, he attempted to form a school which would combine education with work. The school was to be a production unit so that children could finance their own learning and in so doing, they would be under no obligation to anyone.
Furthermore, the school could be free from state interference. Last and not least, he strove to combat the tyranny of method and correctness. It was his commitment to people and their well-being that animated his life's work. And in Aristotle's terms, he would put that which is right or good before that which is correct. His educational method emphasized the importance of providing a loving family type environment in which the child can grow and flourish naturally, becoming a whole person, balanced in, in their intellectual, physical, and technical abilities with emotional, moral, eth ethical, and religious growth. According to Pestalozzi, when individuals are well educated in this way, social improvement and regeneration occurs. Although his ideas were adapted, adopted with considerable initial success in many parts of the world, the social problems he sought to solve continued, and even his own schools were unable to maintain the harmonious family atmosphere he advocated. Finally, clothing due to bitter disputes and conflict among the teachers that lasted several years, Without resolving the problematic relationships within families, which, after this time, increasingly led to divorce and family breakdown, his educational method was doomed to suffer the same failures. Pestalozzi maintained that the classroom should be like a family. The atmosphere must be loving and caring, like in a good Christian family, where the family members are cooperative, loving, and kind to one another. Pestalozzi said there can be no doubt that within the living room of every household are the unit united the basic elements of all Truman, true human education in its whole range. F family is thus, for Pestalozzi, an essential component of education.